Hello everybody. Another eruption has started in Iceland, on the Reykjanes Peninsula, less than a month since the last one ended. Unfortunately, we've ran out of luck, as the location of this eruption is what we've feared since the beginning of this eruptive period back in 2020, with the closest fissure being less than 100 meters from the town as of the making of this video. The town of Grindavík was evacuated quickly and successfully tonight after an earthquake storm began at 3 a.m., with the eruption starting five hours later. The size of this eruption is much smaller than the one back in December, which is the only good thing, as if it would have been similar, lava flows would already be inside the town. An epic recovery mission was conducted to save the machinery used to construct the barriers, as Iceland basically can't afford to lose them, since they're the best, biggest, and most expensive vehicles in the country. Now, let's check out the details. Beginning with the size. Compared to the December 18th eruption, this one is no match, with the length of the fissure being around 1.5 kilometers in total. Unfortunately, as of the making of this video, it is still expanding, as the southernmost part of the fissure opened around noon five hours after the eruption started. Hopefully, the expansion period is over and the eruption begins to stabilize. That means most parts of the fissure would close and activity would be centered at around three craters, which will hopefully be on the north side of the barriers. The lava output is also much less than in the December 18th eruption, probably sitting close to 100 cubic meters per second now in the eruption's peak stage. If this eruption behaves like the previous one, this number should decrease a lot in the upcoming hours. Now, where is it located? The fissure opened just 800 meters from the town, but to everyone's relief, it was north of the barriers, which was a good sign. But as the fissure expanded, it cut through the barriers, rendering them useless, which was really unfortunate. This fissure setup seemed to be the final one, with hopes that the eruption would begin to throttle down, hopefully meaning the fissures south of the barrier would close. That wasn't the case, as a new fissure opened just a few meters north of the town at 12 p.m. The rough look of the fissure as of the making of this video is something like this, with the image also showing the estimated area of the lava field. So, the current situation is grim to say the least. As of the making of this video, lava has reached the first houses, it has also flowed over the main road to Grindavík and destroyed the main water pipe leading to the town, which was fortunately already drained. This makes the damage done by lava flows in the first couple of hours the most we've experienced in 50 years. But why was rescuing the machinery necessary? These vehicles are the best we have in Iceland, so we can't afford to lose them. They are the reason the construction workers are able to build the barriers so fast. That meant the operators headed towards them with lava flows on both sides, but the vehicles were located on top of the barriers. I expect some of you to have witnessed that on the livestream cameras. Must have been intense. One of the operators talked about the experience in the news and said it was indeed pretty intense, but they were all pretty composed. When asked about the heat, he said it hadn't been much of a problem for them, although the windows of one of the vehicles shattered due to it. After the rescue mission, the operators used them to close the gap on the barrier across the main road, which they managed to do just before the flows reached it. What will happen in the next couple of hours? As of the making of this video, it looks like the fissure is done expanding, as, based on the GPS stations, pressure has dropped a lot, shown in a lot of ground subsidence. That is of course to be expected, and has happened three times now since this episode in Svartsengi began back in October of 2023. All the subsidence events are the result of dike intrusions. 
The amount of subsidence is related to the size of the intrusion and eruption, as it reflects how much magma has left the chamber under Schwarzenegger. The subsidence now, since the start of the eruption, is similar to that on December 18th, but less than on November 10th. The lateral movement, on the other hand, is much greater than on December 18th, either because it took much longer to reach the surface, or that there's more magma, maybe a combination of both. That could also explain the weaker power as there's not as much pressure to squeeze the magma out. That, on the other hand, could mean this eruption will last longer, but we can't say for sure. The best case scenario is that it behaves like the previous eruption and is done within a few days. We'll have to wait and see what happens. I just want to thank everyone who made it here. Definitely leave any speculations and questions in the comments. It's always fun to read them. Other than that, I just hope you enjoyed, hope to see most of you in the next video, and thanks for watching.